Hello and welcome to Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast 5-Minute Food Facts Series. I'm Amanda Hayes, your host, a nutritionist with a passion for well-being. I decided to do this series because there's so much conflicting information available about food and various diets. Some of it is credible and some of it is not. It can be time-consuming, not to mention confusing, to try and sift through the noise and get to the heart of the matter. In this series, I will do all of that for you and present factual, reliable information to you in a concise and easy to understand way. I'll take a moment to let you know you can subscribe to my podcast, which includes interviews with experts in the fields of nutrition, physical and mental health, and this five minute food facts series on YouTube, hit the red subscribe button, or on your favorite podcast app, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker or Spotify. The content of the 5-minute food facts series is for information purposes only and is not intended to replace the advice of your health professional. Today's episode is about salt. Salt has been a valuable commodity used as a preservative and seasoning for millennia. Roman soldiers received a salarium, which is a modern precursor of the salary, to buy salt. When we refer to salt, we usually refer to sodium chloride. Sodium is the mineral, and also an electrolyte, responsible for many health effects. So that is what I'll be mainly referring to in this podcast. What salt does in the human body. Sodium is mainly found in the body in fluids around the cells, known as extracellular fluid, and in blood. Sodium is necessary in the body for the transmission of nerve impulses, and the contraction of muscles. When it comes to balancing the amount of sodium in the body, the kidneys are the star performers. Through a complex process of hormonal signaling and biological activity, healthy kidneys filter blood and excrete sodium and other waste products and excess fluids, mainly via urine, but also sweat. They also reabsorb sodium to keep the concentration within a desired range. Among other things, the kidneys also balance the body's fluids and release hormones that regulate blood pressure. So where do we obtain salt in the diet? Natural foods such as fruit and vegetables are low in sodium. Processed foods contain far more. Contrary to popular belief, discretionary salt intake, like sprinkling it on your hot chips, is much lower than what people obtain from manufactured foods. So from a practical point of view, Whilst removing the salt shaker from the, your dining table is a good start, decreasing your consumption of processed foods, even sweet ones, will have a greater impact on reducing sodium intake. Most people think of salt as a problem in relation to its excess. However, too little salt, salt depletion, can also be a problem, although a rare one. Salt depletion can be caused by excessive sweating without replacement, diarrhea such as in um, diseases like cholera and certain diseases like Addison's disease where the kidneys fail to conserve sodium. Salt depletion manifests as peripheral circulatory failure, low blood pressure and finally collapse of circulation and death. As endurance events such as marathons and Ironman triathlons have become increasingly popular, the incidence of exercise-associated hyponatremia, which means low sodium levels in the blood, has increased and even resulted in deaths at some of these events. Although exercise-associated hyponatremia is not completely understood, it largely relates to excessive water intake and is more common in women. A much more common problem overall, however, is excess sodium. Although the kidneys excrete excess sodium, if you regularly consume too much, and most Australians do, more on that in a moment, the kidneys raise blood pressure because they can excrete more sodium at a higher blood pressure. So the kidneys increase blood pressure to get rid of more sodium, but the increase in blood pressure has detrimental effects on your health. Before I explain why, just a quick note on blood pressure. Blood pressure is a measurement expressed by two numbers. The top number is the systolic pressure, and that is the peak pressure your heart generates when pumping blood out through your arteries. 
and the bottom number is the diastolic pressure, the amount of pressure on your arteries when your heart is at rest between beats. The pressure is measured in millimetres of mercury. According to the Heart Foundation of Australia, optimal blood pressure is 120 over 80 millimetres of mercury. Normal blood pressure is between 120 over 80 and 129 over 84. High normal blood pressure is between 130 over 85 and 139 over 89. High blood pressure, known as hypertension, is where the systolic blood pressure is greater or equal than 140 millimetres of mercury and or the diastolic blood pressure is greater or equal to 90 millimetres of mercury. Hypertension is a major risk factor for heart disease and stroke. High blood pressure puts strain on the body's blood vessels, including the arteries to the brain, causing damage. Coronary heart disease, caused by hypertension, is the biggest cause of death in Australia, accounting for 13% of all deaths for males and 11% of all deaths for women in 2016. And hypertension generally increases with age. In Australia, 24% of people aged 45 to 54 are hypertensive, and that jumps to 41% of people aged 65 to 74. That's a huge number of people walking around with heart disease. In terms of consumption of sodium, most Australians consume about 10 grams of salt per day. According to the National Health and Medical Research Council, the suggested dietary target for adults is 5 grams of salt a day. That is half what me, most people consume. And 5 grams of salt is equal to 2,000 milligrams of sodium. The Food Standards Code defines low salt foods as having no more than 120 milligrams of sodium per 100 grams of food. For an example, bread has 500 to 600 milligrams per 100 grams. And as you can imagine, Vegemite is off the charts. Breakfast cereals and cheese are also prime offenders with 480 and 685 milligrams per 100 grams respectively. If you look at the food labels in manufactured foods, the column that says per 100 grams, it is a real challenge to find low sodium foods. So what can be done about it? A recent review published in the journal Nutrients looks at the cardiometabolic outcomes of the DASH dietary pattern. I like this review because it's an umbrella review, which means it is a synthesis of existing systematic reviews and meta-analyses. In other words, it only considers top level evidence for inclusion. One of the aims of an umbrella review is to provide decision makers in healthcare with a clear summary of the highest level of evidence relating to a particular question. Anyway, back to the study. The DASH diet refers to dietary approaches to stop hypertension. It emphasizes fruit, vegetables, low fat dairy, whole grains, nuts, legumes, low sodium, and limits red and processed meats, added sugars, total and saturated fats, and cholesterol. The DASH diet was originally developed to treat hypertension without medication, which in trial situations has been successful in achieving, together with the reduction of other cardiometabolic risk factors. The review analyzes the results of more than 900,000 participants and it found that the DASH dietary pattern was associated with, amongst other things, significant blood pressure lowering effects, both for people who were hypertensive but not on medication and also for those who were taking medication. It also was associated with a 20% reduction in the incidence of cardiovascular disease and a 19% reduction in the incidence of stroke. The review discusses the possible mechanisms for this and for example increased fruit and vegetable intake leads to increased dietary fiber intake and increased magnesium potassium and calcium all of which have can have positive health impacts for example potassium has been shown to assist in sodium balance 
General dietary patterns in the Western world do not currently meet the DASH dietary pattern. So it's a good eating plan for health generally and particularly for reducing hypertension. There is a lot of information online about the DASH diet if you are interested in the principles of it. And just to reiterate, the information in this podcast is not a substitute for advice from your doctor or your health professional. Also, a link to the references I used to compile this podcast will all be available in the show notes. So, what do you call it when salt says hello to pepper? Season's greetings. Thank you very much for tuning in. You can subscribe to Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button and while you're there, click on the bell to be alerted when new episodes are available. You can also subscribe on your favourite podcast app, iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker or Spotify. And you can follow the podcast on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. Direct links to all social media can be found on the subscribe page of my website at www.amandaswellbeingpodcast.com. If you would like to contact me, you can send me a message via the contacts page on my website. Please feel free to suggest topics you'd like to learn more about and people you'd like to hear interviewed, and I'll do my best to deliver that to you. Producing the podcast is a labour of love. We put in a lot of time, money and effort behind the scenes. So if you enjoy Amanda's Wellbeing Podcast and would like to make a contribution via PayPal, Patreon or by Amazon to help ensure we continue to provide you with excellent content, please visit the Contribute page on my website. Also and finally, please take a minute to leave a rating on iTunes. It improves visibility and will help me source excellent guests. Thank you for tuning in. Eat well, move well, think well.